Okay, guys, it is the 28th of October, 2022, and it's a lovely sunny morning. at just gone half past 11. What a time to be alive. We've had a great first project team fed back this morning, but now it's only a small team of four, but these guys are capable. Um, we're going to be uh, led by Richard, who's going to come in with Chrissy Grant, uh, Jal Froney, and of course, Adrian Miller. What a team. So, ladies and gentlemen, for your entertainment pleasure, for all you people watching out there on the World Wide Web, this is the SMSTS Project Feedback. Richard, when I hear your voice, sir, I will start the timer. Good luck, my friend. Uh, I'm really sorry, lads. I actually can't share my screen here. Thank you. The clients are getting rest. Andy K, you're doing well to hold back here, mate. You must be dying to say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, would somebody mind sharing their screen, please? Let me see now. I need to... Um... One second. There we go. There we go. Let me just uh, let me just pause it while. You... <laughs> so good morning, gents. My name is Richard Tate. I'm here on behalf representing Women's Steel Construction Limited. Um, I'm joined today by our managerial team, which is our company director Chris Grant, logistics manager Adrian Miller, and our health and safety manager Jafron. Uh, we're going to discuss construction of six brick and block work houses in uh, Brambley Close. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, so um, this is our site plan at the minute. Um, if we look at um, access to site to start with, we have um, this blue little area here, which is going to be access from Brambley Close. So this road, Brambley Close, uh, all the houses you can see here. Can you all see my cursor all right? Uh, these, no, these you're not, you're not able houses, to. So... These pink and green houses are all um, in use at the minute. So this road is already built. It's already residential. So we, there's going to be no vehicular site access going down these roads. Um, if you follow this um, red line here from the pedestrian entrance and exit, that leads you down a walking path all the way to the main road here, and then crossing over the road, you can see on the left hand side. Uh, there's an old factory building. They've actually issued us with 10 parking spaces. Um, we're going to designate them to different teams on site. Um, that will be managed by our logistics manager, Adrian. He's going to go through that with you in a bit more detail later on. Uh, from the site parking, if you carry on towards the site again, there's a yellow circle there. Uh, them yellow circles are depicting pedestrian crossing points. We've actually agreed with the council um, for us to install a pedestrian safe crossing point for everybody on site. And then following into the site again, uh, you can see the bottom right of our black boundary here, there's a tree protection exclusion zone. So this might look a bit confusing as there's a pond there that seems like it's protruding onto our site. But that pond has actually been um, reduced in size to the black boundary of the tree protection exclusion zone, which has given us a red, that red line there, which is a safe uh, pedestrian walkway straight to our welfare facilities which again, our uh, logistics manager, Adrian, is going to go through everything that's in our welfare a bit later on. Um, following up from the welfare, we have um, a fingerprint entry turnstile into the construction site itself. And the work we're going to be commencing on is these one, two, three, four, five, six brown buildings there, just inside the red pedestrian walkway. But that red pedestrian walkway is going to go around the whole site. It's going to give us access to every part of the construction phase. And... Um, if you have a look just around that, we've got a, in orange there, it's a one-way clockwise traffic system. Um, again, that's gonna be manned by traffic marshals and banksmen with uh, running five miles an hour limit on site. Um, and again, you can see two yellow circles there depicting pedestrian crossing points, which again are gonna be run by traffic marshals. So on the left-hand side there, we see a storage area, which I'm gonna explain in a bit more greater detail in a minute. 
Um, and just underneath that, we've got a delivery gate. So this delivery gate is going to be all vehicles coming in and off site. It's going to be manned again uh, constantly. And again, that orange line there is a clockwise um, site entrance, a clockwise traffic plan. So all vehicles must follow those rules. And in the middle of that, we've got a load of materials lay down area. Um, pretty self-explanatory, really. Um, if we have a look at the top left corner where the cursor is now, uh, there's a farm there. We've spoke to the farmer and he's given us a little section so we can stockpile all our inert muck and stuff like that over there. He's going to reuse it just to keep all the materials in the local area. Um, and then in green, down at the bottom, we have an emergency helicopter landing zone. In the case of emergency, we can only pray that there aren't any serious emergencies, but just in case there are um, emergency services, helicopters can land there safely and do what they need to do. Again, another green point just next to the pedestrian site entrance on Bramberley Close at the bottom. We have our muster point from site. Um, and again, that's going to be explained in greater detail in a bit. If you go to the next slide, please. So I've just covered this, um, but just briefly, uh, welfare facilities can have access and egress points. We covered that. If we go to the next slide, please. Um, again, temporary services onto our into our welfare facilities. We're going to have um, water mains. We're going to have hot and cold water. We're going to have electrics from the electric board from the mains. Um, just from our site set up for three or four weeks, we're going to have a temporary generator there, a silence generator, um, just until permanent power is installed. But um, that shouldn't take too long. And also there's going to be heating provided in all the cabins. So we're moving on to storage now. Um, as I discussed a minute ago in that pink storage area, uh, we're going to have manned and lockable shipping containers just for our PPE, consumables, our tools and stuff like that. Uh, just going to have a sign in and out system. And our storeman is also going to be dealing with our HAVs, HAVs register. So it's quite good. Two birds with one stone there. Where we've got a shipping container for dry storage materials, cement and plasterboards. Um, we have a COSH area there uh, with signage and with drip trays and with um, spill kits as well, just in case, you never know. Um, there's also going to be a waste bin there. We're going to have an offload area there with uh, bricks, uh, blocks, roof materials. I'm also going to have a flammable gas storage cage area as well. Um, just underneath that, we're going to have an area for our skips, which are going to contain general wastes, metal, timber, plasterboards, and any scrap metals. Next slide, please. So with regards to signage, um, we're going to have all the basic signage that you see around most sites. We're going to have our F10 insurance policy and health and safety policy up on the site and on the site hoarding. Um, company and client signage uh, and also flags on our entrance just to let people know who we are. Um, vehicles, speed signage around site, pedestrian walkway signage. Uh, we're going to have the site rules and mandatory PPE up there as well. So everybody who enters site is going to know exactly what they need to do. Um, also, we're going to be... Sorry, just go back a sec. Because um, we're going to have CCTV, which again, our logistics guy is going to speak about that in a minute. Uh, we're just going to have uh, signage just to let everybody know they're being watched, basically. All right, moving on. Um, again, in our segregation area, we're going to have tree conservation signs, um, just bits and bobs about plant, uh, traffic direction, just to make everything safe. And fire safety and emergency plan, that's a big one. So yeah, this is what you'll expect to see if you walk around our site. So moving on, please, Chris. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hand you over to um, our welfare manager now. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Richard. So I'm going to speak more about our welfare and what we have. So we have four cabins, which we expect to have 20 workers and three office staff working in them. Well, in them. So on the bottom level, we have the canteen, toilet, and washroom. And on the first floor, we have the site office, induction room, prayer room, changing room, and drying room. And both the well, all four cabins will be double stacked. Yeah, next one. So in the toilets on the ground floor, so we've got four toilets located for the males, which are all lockable. One female toilet, which has a shower unit as well, which is lockable. And we also have one disabled toilet, which we are also using it as a gender neutral toilet as well which will also have hot and cold running water soap and other suitable cleaning materials and toilets and suitable drains and sinks large enough for face wash hands and forearms 
as well as that, we have 10 wash um, sinks in the toilets and one in the females and one in the disabled toilet. Yeah. Next mm -hmm. one. We also have drinking water coolers, two in the canteen, one in the site office and one in the yeah. site storage area for everyone to use. So in the canteen, we have 16 seats and four tables. We also have hot food provided by a third subcontract company called Northern Monkey Catering Services. The site kitchen will contain all cooking equipment and dishwashing facilities. This will include two kitchen sinks with drainage and a place to store your cutlery and dishes. And we will also provide two microwaves, two toasters and two kettles. Next one. We also having their fire extinguishers and fire blankets will be placed in the kitchen and in the canteen for easy access just in case of an emergency and a fire service safety point will be also included we have one sink which will be available in the canteen and a tv will be hanged on the wall for small breakout sessions where anyone wants to go to have a rest we also have a vending machine in the canteen for snacks and drinks and we also have free fridges provided for everyone use. Now the changing rooms will slash drying rooms. We'll have 30 lockers, clothes for hanging facilities and a drying room will be kept at high temperature to just ensure any wet clothes are dried for the next day use. Yeah, next one. And our designated smoking area will be in the welfare area just adjacent to the welfare facility. Yeah, next one. And cleaning and maintenance. So site toilets will be cleaned twice per day by a professional cleaner. The canteen will be cleaned every lunch break and other welfare facilities will be cleaned and maintained daily. Yeah. So onto the site security now. Yeah, next one. So we'll erect a hoarding, which is 2.4 meters of pile wood frames. The site access for the workforce will be controlled by a fingerprint entry, as well as signing sheets will be located at Brandy Close, will be policed by a SIA trained security at all times. We'll also have vehicle access on school road managed by two traffic marshals and one SIA trained security guard. And we'll have 24 hour CCTV surveillance in operation covering the whole site and the site entrance. During the night, we'll also have an SIA trained dog handler doing hourly walks covering the night shift and closing time. As well as that, the fingerprint software on site entry will allow information on who is on site at any given time. If the fingerprint access software fails, we'll also have a sign in book and sign out book available to take its place just to control who's on site and who's not. Yeah, next one, please. So I'm going to pass you over to Chris, who will speak to you more about the document control. Thanks very much, Adrian. Um, I'll just the next couple of slides just, just talk you through what you'd expect to see when you come to our site, uh, what we'd expect to see in, in, uh, in a project manager's office, Richard's office. So, so basically what, what I'm going to show you, that's what you would come and see. You come into the office and look at the files. That's what you would see. You would see plenty of stuff like on that will have obviously keeping the, the site attendance register up to date. Um, and we'll take that information off daily from, from the, the, the turnstiles and the gates. We've got the daily daily safety briefings will be um, displayed as well. Um, we've designed a toolbox talks um, specifically for the project. And we're going to roll out um, themes that are going to just... Um, just basically develop as, as, as the works develop, which are going to be relevant to the, the work in hand. Um, we've identified a, a number of the key work, work permits there that, you, that you'll see that we, 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 we have identified at this stage anyway, that we think we'll need. Hot works, permit to dig, working height permits, you know, um, street works permits, uh, permit to pump, um, and, and your temporary works permits and your confined space as well. Um, you're obviously going to see the RAMS, the RAMS register. Rich is going to be, uh, he's going to be on that all the time keeping that up to date um, and engaging with our supply chain, making sure that that's all in in a timely manner. Um, Richard also keeps the site induction information there, but just to give you some assurance, that's going to be all in accordance with the GDPR regulations and all kept confidential and is only um, is in accordance with the regulations there. 
Uh, we, we've got an, an accident book. Uh, we, we're, we're swearing whether we're going to have an accident book or an online accident reporting system. We're just migrating to that at the minute. So, but whatever way, it could be rest assured, it's all going to be compliant with the regulations. You know, you're going to see the health and safety plan, the construction phase plan. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a live document. It's a work in, work in progress for us all. You know, so again, feel free to come in and, and review it any time. You know, we welcome feedback on that as well, how we can improve that. Uh, you're going to see your mandatory registers for the excavation, your scaffold, your temporary works, uh, lower, or pure, and all the rest of it uh, that you expect to see. You know, and obviously um, we're going to have Adrian's going to come regularly and uh, review our, um, or Jeff Roney's going to come and review our health, he's our health and safety manager, and we do that. You'll see our training matrix just to show that our competencies are up there and what our training plan is for the project. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff there, guys. I probably won't have time to go through it all there just now, but uh, that, that, just one or two I'll maybe po point out. You know, it's very important to us as well that we get the feedback from you know visitors that come to site um, and that, that you know, we, we have a complaints procedure in place as well. You know, we're, 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 keep, we're very aware that there's a lot of um, residents and we've got the school beside us there and we've got the farmer across the road and we've, we've just got to make sure that we're keeping on top of that and make sure that we're we're saying what we're going to do and what we're saying in this this, this meeting to you, that that's reflected with, with, with our guys on site as well. You know, um, the other thing very important to me as well, delivery records, we, we keep a strict, a strict regime on delivery control. The timings are controlled around that as around, you know, working around the school hours and the residential hours. We can't have it, you know, obviously overnight deliveries as a res residential hour. So all our all, all deliveries will come between 10, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. We agreed that already with the school. Um, and also what I would say as well, any delivery must have a, a delivery offloading plan. Uh, uh, and you know, so so basically, have visitors induction, and I'll come on to that in a wee minute as well. Um, how how we how we control that? Uh, again, we've talked about the health and safety work posters. I'm not I'm not I'm not dwell too much on that. Okay, so basically, just briefly, what what would you expect to see when you come to our induction, and what what, what would you expect to see? Um, well, you need to be in eight o'clock in the morning. Richard does the, the inductions in there in the welfare facilities. You must come and give us twenty four hours notice prior to induction. Or if you can't you can't come in, you just don't get on the site that day. Or uh, if you give us a bit of prior arrangement, we might be able to make specific uh, exceptions for that. So we realise we live in the real world. Um, Richard does the site uh, the, the the site inductions. I'll cover the site rules. I'll go into a bit more of a detailed traffic, more developed traffic management plan as we get it. The emergency procedures, welfare facilities, first aid arrangements, fire assembly points, who we all are on site, who are the designated supervisors who will who will actually be your key point for doing your safety um, uh, briefings and, and, and engagement with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we'll always talk about the parking arrangements. What are the dangers regarding the members of the public? That's very important to us. We've got a busy time, particularly in the mornings, around about uh, at nine o'clock and around about three o'clock in the afternoons. That's really something important to us that we need to really carefully manage. Um, particularly around the early days, underground services, your know, service strikes and and digging holes is going to be a big, a big, a big topic for us, and one of one of the first things that we'll start on. Uh, and I'm going to just talk about our mental health policy just before we go on. Uh, this is our mental health policy. We intend to work with all our workforce to ensure mental health is managed and understood. We feel very strongly that mental health is of the utmost importance, and we work hard to help the workforce and their family to get through any difficult times they may go through regarding mental health. And this is and this is how we're going to achieve that. Uh, all management will, 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 will give them the option to, 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 to be a, for, a mental health first aid. It's not for everyone, but you know everyone will, will have the option of doing it on our management team. But there will be plenty of, plenty of mental health first aiders. And we'd offer that as well to, to some of the guys on site as well. If they, they want to, to, to do that, that's going to be a thing that we will we'll develop with the, the workforce. Uh, we're going to have an occupational mental health nurse who will visit site regularly, but is always available on call all the time to assist the workforce. You know, we're going to actively promote a healthy way of life and good well-being. You know, part of the community, we're, we're, we're a key part of the community here. We want everyone to go home as part of that, uh, you know, that genuinely committed to that. We're working closely with the Lighthouse Charity, and we're going to support the, the Help Inside the Hard Hat campaign, which is the latest campaign, which is a fantastic campaign, which is really, really up and raising the bar when it comes to mental health awareness in the industry. Uh, and we're going to, as well, you know, the mental health app as well, that, the, you know, that's free to download, dead easy to download, the dead, dead easy way to just to get people engaged with um, getting help and support, you know, and we'll, we'll, we will make sure that's promoted through um, through Toolbox Talks and our regular mental health awareness. Okay. Uh, and, and, and of course, not, not everyone wants to download an app, so we'll make sure that we've got other ways and means of contacting them um, as well. And of course, doors always open. 
permissions and notifications we got for the project, uh, we've, we've, we've been through, I'll touch on these briefly at the beginning, uh, the local authority, we spoke about the, the speed restrictions with the school road and the pedestrian crossing we're installing. We've, we've spoken to all the all the key um, network authorities, uh, Thames Water, the DNO, Electricity Authority. We've, we've spoken to the gas company just to make sure they're not doing any planned work around the area at the time. We're not going to have fibre optics on the site. We're just we're just going to take a satellite um, a connection for the for our broadband, you know. And and we're going to, of course, work closely maintaining the existing new pond. Uh, it's just been recently modified, and um, we've got our all our local licenses in place for for removal and temporary storage off site. And we're going to uh, engage with the emergency services as well. And uh, we've got a lot of stuff there that we've got to talk about local engagement activities. I don't have time to walk, uh, go into them too much, but again. Working with the community is a big, big, important thing to us. You know, we're going to run a competition with the local school to design our horn artwork. We're going to use local trade teams where possible and uh, use local suppliers to keep the, your carbon footprint down as well as um, uh, putting that money back in the local economy there. You know, we're going to hire and train four local apprentices to assess with our project. We're fully committed to that. Uh, and so, uh, as is our supply chain. Uh, we're going to do a house and building design competition and we're going to incorporate a safety message around that just to kind of keep get, get that safety message in there. It's really important to us as well. You know, and we've got um, a full-time lollipop person who spoke to the school about this. We're going to cover the cost of the lollipop person during during the duration of the project. And again, we're just talking as we talked about the farmer too much just now. Okay, I'll quickly touch on the emergency procedures and arrangements and I'm going to hand you over to uh, uh, Joe Froney just to finish us off. Guys, as you know, we operate a three-tier accident plan, and, and but basically all accidents, incidents, near misses, unsafe conditions. We're going to put a big uh, emphasis on, on unsafe conditions uh, on this project, um, and you know they, they should be, however minor, it should be reported. And you, you know we've talked about muster points already. You've seen how 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 we how we roll. You've seen the, the plan already. I maybe won't spend too much time on that just now, but you can see. That this will be freely available to you to review and um, and come back to us with any questions at the end if you need needs be. Um, we've got plenty of trained first aiders and fire marshals on site. They'll be clearly displayed on the notice board, safety board, and we're going to have button alarm control points, which will be in use. We'll cover fire emergency and accident emergency. So that that's all about. It. And again, we're going to do a proper fire, you know, uh, full, full fire risk assessment uh, once we get a bit more of a developed plan um, moving forward. And that'll be done by an independent um, assessor. Um, just to point a couple of environmental hazards, just to point out that we need a, an emergency response that we're going to have uh, dealing with the contamination, potential contamination of an existing pond. What will we do? We've got Briggs Environmental, who are a, who are a, a cleanup pollution specialist contractor. We've got them already on board. They've seen the site. They know what to do in the event of something going badly wrong in the worst case scenario. But as you would imagine, we've got spill kits and we've got trained people in the use of using spill kits to deal with any, any kind of minor spillages, as we do around with the oil and fuel spillages. You, you would expect that for any competent contractor. I know you've seen all that for all the all the prequel stuff that we've already filled in already. Okay, I'm going to leave it now with um, Jeff, Jeffroni to do some site rules for you to finish off. Um, hello, guys. Uh, my name is Jeffroni. I'm the manager for Health and Safety. Um, before I go through the rules, uh, everyone needs to be aware and sign a sheet saying they read it and they understood and they're going to follow. And uh, the whole site rule is going to be reviewed until the completion of the work. Um, all personnel should uh, undergo safety induction training. Uh, and the minimum PPE requirements is hard hat, high vis, safety glass, safety boots, and safety shoes. Uh, all person must have CSCS cards and they need to sign up the company runs before go on site. Uh, one of the most important site rules is every accident or near miss event needs to be reported immediately to the manager. And uh, any person found should be interfered or miss Fuster. Uh, fittings equipment provide the interest of the health and safety and well, uh, welfare should be excluded from the sites. Uh, smoking will be only permitted in designated areas. Uh, all the visitors must report to the site manager who will arrange uh, a site visitor induction and will provide the uh, the minimum PP requirement. Um, safety signs are going to be um, around the site and must be followed. Is uh, no alcohol and illegal drugs need to be bring to the site. Uh, no person 
under the influence of drugs and alcohol need to be on site. Uh, if you have a bad behavior or use uh, inappropriate language, you're gonna be asked to leave. You're gonna be on site. Uh, please make sure the toilets and the washroom keep clean as you get to use. Uh, Chris, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, refuse must not be allowed to accumulate, uh, to accumulate work hours, not be kept tight. Um, no work to commence on site unless a suitable, safe system of works are in place. And no site personnel for their own safety and for the safety of the others are required to fully comply with the employee statement and safe work method. And site, uh, site fire and emergency alarms, equipments and introductions are designed to protect life. They must be followed. And um, yep, thank you for everyone to listen to the presentation. And now uh, we are open for questions. Right, as is traditional, let's give it a round of applause. Hey. Come on. Hey, well. All right, let me just write that down with the time. Hold on. Oh. Okay, can we have um, Andy Kay with the first question then, please? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, just to act as a, anyone really there. Um, Obviously, as you're not part of the Consider Constructors scheme, uh, like Andy Kerrigan's team, um, <laughs> I was just wondering how you aim to protect the public at the uh, bus stop. What what measures have we got in place there, which are just situated outside the site? Well, we've got two traffic marshals on, on full-time patrol in the area there, Andy, directing the traffic. We've already engaged with the, all the local authorities. Yeah, right. We have we, 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 we spoke to the bus couple. We didn't mention that in the presentation, but that's we haven't we had them as a stakeholder as well, so yeah, yeah we've got we, we've covered that with with the, the the traffic control. You know, we're not going to have any car park. That's why we we went to get the car park across the road. You know, we we don't we can't have any car parking around anywhere near the site at all. So that's what's got to be completely segregated. There. And we recognise that's the human nature. People are going to pull up on the curb. Lorry drivers are going to pull up on the curb. They're going to do that. So that's why we need to you know, police that religiously. Yeah. Okay, excellent, good. Um, just um, on the what what provisions have you got in place um, for the tree protection order? What 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 is it you're doing there? That's all buried off by a hoarding, so you can't get into it. Right, and the signage signage displayed. Yeah. So we've already agreed that with the the local ecology. I don't know what the ecology department is in England, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we've, we've already spoken to them. They they've been a key stakeholder. Because obviously we had to we had to do a lot of work around getting permission to put that up around the 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 the, the, the lake there as well, you know. So yeah. we, we we wouldn't have got permission. We needed to get permission to do that. So we just zoned that off just to de-risk that altogether. Yeah, good stuff. Um, just the nature of the site. Uh, how do you, how are you going to manage the uh, vehicle and pedestrian segregation? Um, how many banksmen have you got there? Where, where's that, Andy? Sorry. Uh, just on the on the site itself, you know, you've you've got the access to it. Uh, Richard, sorry, I'm hogging the light light here. Go on. All right, I'll take this one. Yeah, that's no problem. Um, so in the, I'm assuming you're talking about the um deliveries entrance, Andy. Yeah. So on that deliveries entrance, we're gonna have one security guard just to run the security there. Uh, again, he's gonna be SIA trained. Uh, following that, we're gonna have two traffic marshals there. Um, one just in case for each side of the road, just in case of any big deliveries coming in. And again, we've got a. Uh, quite a vast traffic team as you can see on the drawings we showed you uh, mm -hmm. inside them yellow circles there we've got traffic marshals scattered around the site already so um yes, it, the site plan, so it's gonna be more easy for them to to see no that's okay don't it's fine um okay. yeah just so if if anyone's spare they can always jump in and pitch in as well we've also got trained banksmen for um all of our plant and machines they're free to help as well so we've got quite a vast we've got quite a big team dealing with that because that's that's a big priority for us, really. Again, safety for... It's a huge risk management uh, deliveries, Andy. And, and, and yeah. as you might have noticed, we've got a, a delivery and offloading plan. So yeah. the, it's re and that, that's all set out in advance to all the, the, the delivery drivers as well. So they know what to do when they come to site. They know yeah. to come and report to the site manager. And they know that they'll be turned away if they don't have a delivery, a risk assessment in place. We have a zero yeah. tolerance on that. And, yeah. and also, just to pitch in there as well, as uh, was covered earlier, Anybody coming in to do deliveries uh, will have to do a visitor's induction as well. So just just to ensure the safety of all the drivers coming into site as well. Again, just... excellent. That that was my next question. How, how do you manage the uh, deliveries to site? 
because uh, yeah. it's, it's mainly the drivers, which we have a, a, a massive problem with them jumping out, no hard hats, PPE, yeah. and running around the site. So okay. yeah, I'm, I'm 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 happy to hear that. That's uh, very good. Um, any any other questions from from my team at all? You want to throw anything in? Yeah, I was just wondering with regards to fire safety, where your muster points were and where your extinguishers are and what, what you're doing towards fire safety. So with our, um, uh, as we, we showed in the drawing earlier, just in the top right, just on Bramley Close there, just at the end of the close, is our muster point is there. And um, we're going to do a, a more detailed fire plan uh, when the job comes up, just to as the work process uh, goes on a bit more, we can change our muster points accordingly to that, really. Perfect. Perfect. Again, all of our must, all of our um fire points are going to have. I think we went through it earlier a bit, but they're going to have um a button for fire safety and for emergency use as well. That's going to be directly linked straight to our office team, so they're going to know exactly where the issue is. I again, we're not fire experts, but what we do is we've been putting in an independent fire risk assessor to come and actually do an independent assessment, and that that's just ongoing at the moment. So again, we're just waiting on the outcome of that, and we'll um, we'll, we'll share that with you as well. You know, we we want to make, you know that's you know particularly around residential areas. You know, it's a, it's a really massive massive issue. Uh, so we've identified that as a, a massive uh, issue. Yeah, and uh, thanks for that question. Good I've got time for one more question. If anybody's got one. Yeah, I, I was wondering. I don't have the 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 side plan in front of my eyes, but if if I'm not wrong. I haven't seen any green route that leads to the office where, where the site induction goes. Somehow the route from the entrance uh, coin, uh, go, goes through, through the traffic and stuff. Is there any green route that leads uh, to the office? Sorry, yeah. The um, what, what I'll do now, Alex, um, if somebody can just open up the, share the screen for the drawing again, I can go through that with you properly now, if you like. Well, uh, I might be wrong, guys. Just, just, I don't, I can't remind, I don't have the, the slide plan. One so second. Okay, no problem. Give me a minute. Share the screen again. So if we look at the um the east side entrance, the pedestrian entrance there on the yeah. right hand side, the blue marker there, that them red lines are depicting the um pedestrian safe routes. So that pedestrian safe route is going straight along the pavement, and again, that's segregated from any site traffic. So it's all going to be fenced off and barriered off, and that's a safe access directly into our first port, port point of call on site, which is our welfare facilities. <clears throat> and, and Richard, and Richard, do you want to just mention the fact that that's that's the safe route that we've agreed with the council? They're putting up we're, we're put a pedestrian crossing in there, yeah. so that yeah. the traffic will stop. That's going to be the, the speed's reduced down to twenty miles per hour. We've got a temporary speed limit uh, yeah. all, along that road, a temporary tra traffic order to do that. Um, but also you can come in, so you can basically walk directly without, uh, and there's a safe crossing point there. Come into the site there. So there's two two uh, security points really. One is the pedestrian access, but then when you're on on site, once you leave the welfare and go on to the, actually the main site where that orange light you know is there, we've got we're going to have a, a barrier, another barrier to site. So there's two barriers, one to get to the site in the first place, um, and then to get your PP on, and then you need to have all yeah, your PP on before you go to the, the main site. So that's so it's and then the red the red route you see right round it that, that's that's a safe route. Right round the, to to all areas and your storage area as well. So mm -hmm. so that's all segregated. It's a separate. We've got a separate system for pedestrians and plant. No, oh, yeah, that answers my question. Thank you. Good. All, all right. right. Any more questions, guys? Anything else you guys uh want to know? I think I think we've run out of time anyway. So let's give it a round of applause. Come on. Cool. Well done, lads. Well done. Two very, very good meetings there, guys.